you might be wondering what all these items have in common. These are all items that I love to use to texture my polymer clay. Stay tuned and see what they are and how I use them. All right, so I've got just a piece of original Sculpey that I'm going to demo all of the different texturing tools that we're going to look at today. So let's start out with probably the smallest one that we use and that I ever use, and that is just some plain peppercorns from the kitchen. That's right, from the spice cabinet. And you can just roll these over the surface. And each peppercorn is individual. So you'll get a slightly different texture from each one. Um, but they really give a nice texture. And be sure and check the blog post. I'll have photos of all of these different textures on the blog post. My video camera just can't, I can't focus in super, super close with it. And if it leaves a little bit on there, don't worry about it. Just use a brush to brush it off. But that's something I don't, I don't remember to use as often as I should, but it does leave a really cool texture on your clay. So let's go to the next one. All right, next up is not a single tool, but it's really a category, and that is what I like to call pointy tools. Now, you've, if you've been watching my videos, you've seen this dental pick in my hand a lot. I use, this is just an extension of my hand. I use it tons, and I use it both for all kinds of things, but one is texturing. And one of the things I love to do with this is just to kind of tickle the surface and raise up a crumb-like texture. And to do that, you're just doing little tiny circles, barely touching. Um, like I said, it's like tickling. Um, and this is probably the most common texture I do with this. And this is, you'll see this inside of like baked goods, like when I'm making breads or cakes or something. I'll do this sometimes in con connection with something else. My second favorite pointy tool is just a sewing pin. And basically you can do the same thing. It takes a little, you got to adapt to it a little bit. But the nice thing about the sewing pin is it has a smaller point. And like I said, there will be photos of the textures in the blog post. And lastly is a toothpick. You can use a toothpick the same. That's not a very pointed toothpick. Let me get a better pointed toothpick. There we go. A toothpick. Um, it's a much blunter end. So you'll make a more, um, a slightly different kind of texture, but related. And you don't have to limit yourself to just these three pointy tools. Look in your stash, look in your tool stash, look in just the junk drawer for things that you've got that you could use to texture your clay that is pointed. So let me set up for our next tool. All right, our next texturing tool is a, some wadded up aluminum foil. And because you can manipulate this into different sizes of creases, you can make a lot of variety in the pattern you make. A lot of times this is my first layer of texture and I'll follow up with other layers of texture with other tools later. Um, but this gets a large surface textured very quickly and it's a, a pretty deep, abrupt texture, I guess you would say. The, like I said, you can use something else over it to kind of soften it and make it look a little different, but I love foil and it's, I also use it to nestle things in. It's always in my drawer of my clay tools and it's just a really handy thing. So let's go to the next tool. All right, next up is some sandpaper and to go along sandpaper, some emery, an emery board. So usually I lay this on flat on my surface and then work with it, but to keep this consistent how I'm doing this. You can touch it to the surface and get just a very subtle texture. A coarser sandpaper works better. I look through all my drawers. 220 seems to be the coarsest I have on hand at the moment. And that's a pretty, that's a fine sandpaper. Uh, a coarse, an 80 grit is a much better one, but I can't find any. And I keep thinking I'm gonna buy some and keep forgetting. An emery board works much the same. 
And one of my favorite things to do with sandpaper is actually when I'm making like miniature cookies, I'll form them right on the sandpaper and that gives a very much a bottom of the cookie texture to the bottom of my cookies, especially if you dust this with a little bit of chalk and then do the cookies on top of it, they'll look like they're browned and baked on the bottom. So let's see what I've got next. All right, these are both basically the same thing, but they're, I think this is an off-brand probably from the dollar store, and this one is probably one from the grocery store. But these are pot scrubber pads. They're a textured pad that you buy near the dishwashing stuff, and they have the most incredible texture that you can use on your clay. Um, I use these a lot. Um, and I love to use this one in conjunction with foil. We did that yesterday in the omelet video, if you saw that. If you didn't see that, go ahead, look for it on the channel. But I don't know how well the camera's picking that up. The video, on the video, on the blog post, I'll have a photo. Hopefully you'll be able to see the difference in the texture from the two of these. They're great for texturing your clay. Okay, I've got, I think, one more thing to show you today. So let me get ready to do that. All right, our last texturing tool that we're gonna talk about today are brushes. I like both the wire cleaning brushes, I got a set of these at Harbor Freight, as well as just a cheap toothbrush. Both work really well, and they're just, you just kind of do this on your clay, and you can get some wonderful textures. Um, The, obviously the toothbrush is a little more delicate, a little softer texture. But So those are just some of the texturing tools that I pull out on a regular basis. Um, there are others that you see me use from time to time, but like I said, these are the ones I pull out most of the time, so they're the ones I wanted to share with you today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Be sure and hop over to the blog post for photos of what the textures look like better. If you enjoyed the video, be sure and hit the like button. Do you have any questions about polymer clay that you'd like me to answer in this series? If you do, let me know so that I can do them. If you enjoy my content and haven't subscribed, I encourage you hit that subscription button and the notification bell so you know when I put up a new video. I thank you very much for watching today and I will talk to you later. Bye.